DFG Science TV, Stone Age Giants, the trail of rocks, from portal tombs to graves and their builders. On some lake beds, there is another piece of the mosaic waiting to be found that can provide the researchers with new insights on the subject of monumentalism. Or, to put it more precisely, in the sediment on the lake bed, which has been deposited over thousands of years. The archaeobotanist Walter Dörfler and a team of scientists and technicians want to probe down into the depths. They hope to be able to take cores of the layers of sediment under the lake using a drill mounted on a raft, reaching down to a depth of 26 metres. This, they hope, will tell them about the ancient climate and what the landscape was like at that time. This may enable the researchers to find out whether climate change in the Neolithic period may have led to a rapid cultural change in the era of monumentalism. Ingo Faser, a research assistant involved in the priority program, and the ecosystem researcher Stefan Dreibrot have high hopes for the drill cores. Well, we'll take a look at the sediment. We'll look to see what the structure of the annual layers is like, whether there are abrupt changes, and we'll also look at various lakes from various different landscapes throughout Germany. Our basic approach is simply that if we find sudden changes in different lakes that are really synchronized, in other words, that took place at exactly the same time here in Schleswig-Holstein as well as in Brandenburg and in the Eiffel in the west of Germany, then they must be due to the climate. We analyze the pollen, which in principle means we look at the composition of the pollen, and that allows us to reconstruct the species composition of the vegetation. And the seasonal layers we hope to find here will enable us to construct a very precise chronology. For each core they drill, the team has to set up the drill string so that it's exactly the right length. No easy task on the shaky raft. Gradually, the researchers work their way through the layers of sediment on the lake bed. On the raft, there is a guide tube which they use to make sure that they always drill in the same hole. As soon as they have taken a two-meter core, the work of analyzing it can get underway back on land. Each core is split lengthwise, opened up and photographed. Samples of the material in the core are subsequently examined in the lab and everything it contains is carefully assigned. With a little bit of luck, the researchers can see fine alternating layers of light and dark sediment, the so-called lamellation. These are annual rings similar to growth rings in a tree, which can be counted and correlated to our time scale by means of scientific analysis. But can a single lake really provide enough information about an entire stretch of land? Of course, we can't reconstruct the whole landscape, but the smaller the lakes are, the smaller their catchment area, and the larger they are, the more we can include. But of course, that also gives us a less clear picture. A single settlement is best examined in a small lake that was close to that settlement, whereas the general settlement pattern is best seen in large lakes. The deeper they drill into the ground, the more information the cores contain, but the harder it is to drill into the increasingly hard ground. The researchers need to use what is known as the Wacker, a kind of pneumatic hammer, to help them go deeper. This is, uh, how shall I put it, back-breaking work? Mm -hmm. The first day of drilling is drawing to a close. They will spend two more days drilling here before moving the raft to the next lake, Pogensee, to drill for cores there. Not far away from where the cores are being taken, in the Neolithic pile settlement of Vulcanvea in the Brenner Bog, the researchers are already digging for further finds. This is where the builders of the megalithic graves lived more than 5,000 years ago. What is left of their settlement in the bog now? Visit DFG Science TV for more information. Awaken the researcher within you.